hello guys you're welcome back to another episode on our past question discussion from university of professional studies located in accra ghana so hey if you're new on this channel kindly make sure to subscribe smash the like button and then share with your friends as well if you're a returning subscriber thanks for joining us once again we are grateful to having you here so today we are taking on to another question all together and then it is on question from financial statement analysis that's interpretations of what financial statement so let's get started you are welcome once again so as you can see on your screen this is a question that we are looking at in today's video so let's get started with it i read you are presented with the following summarized account for kenyatta a limited liability company so this is a statement of comprehensive income for kenyatta for the year ended the first may 20x5 we have revenue cost of sales gross profit and the likes you also have the statement of financial position that's mostly called it as balance sheet we have the assets and then we have the non-current what liabilities and then we have current liabilities as well as other information so we are asked to or we are required to calculate the following ratios for kenyatta limited for the year and the 31st may 20x5 and then we are asked to state clearly the formula used for each ratio remember when it comes to financing a business okay for the company that you want to finance you don't just wake up and say i want to finance this company there are some procedures some methods that you need to go through before you can finance any business you need to do some background checks and then financial statement analysis is one of the key background checks that and as an investor if you want to earn a, a good returns on your investment and then to ensure that your investment is not locked up and to ensure that your your, your investment that you're making is is in good hands then you expect that for you to do all these background checks and to see whether that company you want to go into is good in terms of profit or return is going to end it's good whether you can protect your capital for a long term and other things so that's why we do all this financial system analysis for us to tell you as an investor that this is what you are going into and this is a company you are you are going into and these are the things that it does and this is the return is going to end this is how your capital is going to be used and this is the rate at which your capital can be converted to cash and that it can pay you and other things so these are the reasons why we engage on in financial statement analysis or interpretations of what financial statement i hope that is clear so these are fundamental things as an investor as an investor as an individual if you invest in a company these are the background checks that you need to understand before you make any attempt to enter into that company or that business that you want to invest in. i hope that is clear so let's get started with uh, the requirements of the question i think that one make it clearer for us to go so you are required to calculate the following return on capital employee gross profit percentage net profit percentage quick or asset test ratio and receivable collection period so as and when we solve and come up with the figures we interpret in that light so just stay tuned with me if time that you are joining us make sure to like and then subscribe and subscribe to the channel and make sure to turn on the notification bell okay please and please subscribe like and make sure to turn on the notification bell so once you do that at any time we are uploading the video or we go live you'll be the first person to get notified so that we can join us and learn together i hope that is clear so thanks once again for being with me this time so i'm grateful to you so let's get started we are asked to calculate return on capital employed. remember return on capital employed is one of the profitability ratios it's one of the profitability ratios which measures or talks about the profitability of the whole firm and that of capital efficiency how well capital is being used and how well we generate what returns on the capital that we used that is return on capital employed we're talking about profitability and capital efficiency i hope that is clear so in that when you want to calculate return on capital employed there's a formula so here here's where i'm going to use to present all this information so here's going to be my board so just be with me carefully here 
this is going to be my world for the presentation so let's take note of that all right so return on capital employed as i call it what ROS, R O C E, return on capital employed, is always defined as earning before or earnings before interest and what tax. So, anytime you see E E I T, you're talking about earnings before interest and tax divided by your capital or what employed, divided by your capital employed. In other books or in other information you can read online, it will tell you that return on capital employed is earning before interest and tax. All divided by your total assets minus total current liability. You can also use that formula to compute for return on capital employed. Earning before interest and tax all over your total assets take into account or less your total current liability. You can also use that one to compute for earnings return on capital. Sorry, return on capital employed. Sorry. Okay, so in that light. Let's go for our earnings before interest and that's profit before interest and tax. So if that is so, then our profit before interest and tax is going to take its effect from here, which is what? 40. So it's going to be 40. Remember, we're having what? Three zeros at the top here. Okay. So you let me have it down. 40,000. Remember, we are using Ghana cities. All right. So Ghana shillings. So don't worry. So 40,000 divided by, so what is our capital employee? Remember capital employee, we are talking about the total sum of all the capital that we use for the operations of the business or used to finance operations of the business. So in that light, capital employee is going to be the total of what the equity from the shareholders plus any outside what debt that the business I mean issued whether long-term or short-term debt whether current or long-term debt that's what i mean so here it's actually your total equity plus total what liabilities that will give you your capital employed that will give you a capital capital employer talking about the total equity and total what liability and as i've indicated return on capital employed help us to know how we capital has been efficiently used so that we get to know that this is the profit that we are generating from employment or for the employment of the use of what this status sum of capital so we are talking about capital efficiency it's very important profitability and capital efficiency return on capital employed so let's take note of that so here my capital employed in this case was what so our capital employed is going to be our Total equity and liability is what for fifty thousand. So here is going to be forty thousand divided by what for fifty thousand. Okay, remember because this is a profitability ratio, you always multiply. You convert to what hundred percent, right? So you multiply by what hundred hundred percent. So with your calculator, you should be able to get around eight point. 8, 8 remember the 88 is a real carrying figure so i just wrote it two decimal please so 8.88 percent and in that light this tells us that within this company within kenyatta company at every one dollar that you invest in the company as a capital you want to i mean invested in that company you end 8.88 percent as about a returns or interest on that one dollar or that one ghana cd that you issue as an investment in the company for every one Ghana so remember it was Ghana City so for every one Ghana shilling that you invested in the company you're gonna end 8.88 percent as an interest for that one shilling that you invested in that company that is in the case of a Kenyatta World company so that is the meaning behind so there is a profit that we are obtaining from our capital world utilization how our capital is being generated this is a profit that we are earning from the capital that is both equity and debt both equity and debt or both equity and what liability so let's get or let's take note of that let's take note of that so that's our return on capital employed i hope you are good at your end 
If that is okay, then let's continue with II. We are asked to calculate what? Our next requirement is to calculate what? Gross profit percentage. So gross profit percentage is also a profitability ratio that indicates the performance of the company internally. It indicates the performance of the company internally. That is gross profit what? Gross profit percentage indicates the performance of the company internally. So it measures the operations, the, the earnings that we earn, sorry, the earnings that we end from the normal operations of the business as against our sales that we made for the period. That's the internal, internal operations, as I mean. So in this light, I can say my gross profit, as all we call that as well, GP, is going to be my gross profit percentage. So let me add that one here. Gross profit percentage is going to be my gross profit, GP, all over my net sales. Net what? Sales. Remember, because the profitability ratio, most of the time we convert to what? 100%. So 100 is that okay so in that light i can say that my gross profit that case was what 120 so 120,000 is going to be so let me have my gana in here i think the first one i didn't write but then i'll bring it here 120,000 divided by so what is my net sales net sales here that's revenue as what 320,000 all right and then multiply by what 100 so in that light, I can say that. So with the calculator, you can clearly see that with your gross profit percentage, you get something like thirty-seven point five percent. So this is the interpretation behind that. Internally, what we end when we convert our sales, that is for these profitability ratios, especially gross profit, because we said there is an internal operations of the firm or we're talking about internal performance operations of the firm and it's being measured as, as against sales we are talking about the rate at which you can earn interest based on the sales that we made for that period within that company hey get it right when it comes to profit gross profit percentage okay we are talking about the earnings that we will generate from the sale of stocks from the sale of stocks so this the energy we are earning from this number of stocks or this number of sales that we make i mean inventory that we're able to sell to our customer this is what we are generating as an earnings or as a return or as an interest let me put it in that way for the whole world company so if you have to invest in this inventory this is what you're going to earn if you invest in every one shilling within their company in this canada company this is what you're going to earn as a gross profit or present before and that interest expense is going to be taken care of. I hope that is clear. So this is the interpretation behind. This is the profit that we are earning from the company internally, waiting for other deductions like administrative, finance cost, taxes, and those stuff. I mean, we get there to those end very soon. So this is our gross profit percentage we are earning in that light. So I hope that is clear. So that is something we need to know when it comes to gross profit percentage. So let's continue on to III. So III, we also asked to calculate what? Let's see. Net profit percentage. So net profit percentage. So net profit percentage to, as I call it, NP with my percentage. So is going to be my net profit, okay, divided by my net sales. Net sales. And then multiply by what 100. But one thing you need to take care of when it comes to net profit here is that we are talking about the profit for the whole firm. We are talking about the profit of the whole firm after taking into account expenses internally and expenses outside. Expenses internally and expenses outside the business or outside the firm. That is where net profit percentage actually is derived. Okay, so we are talking about the whole performance of the company. We are talking about the total performance of the whole company that is why we are earning as a net profit as a net profit after taking into account every expenses taxes finance a lot all the tax i mean sorry all the expenses and you take all expenses from the gospel whatever is left becomes your net profit all the expenses that's why we call the net profit for 
the company in that line. So in that case, my net profit, so net profit for the period is going to be this, right? Which is 20. So here it is what? Profits after tax and interest. So that's going to take what? 20,000. 20,000 Ghana shilling divided by your total net sales. In this case, it was revenue, right? Which is what? 320. So it's going to be 320. Thousand then multiply by what hundred so in that live video calculator I should be able to get a figure around six point two five you have to convert to this map please six point two five what percent so this is a problem we are earning in employment of stocks I mean inventory when you put inventory into sales there is a return that we are earning as a whole firm taking into account our total revenue or sales for the period this is what we are earning in the investment of what inventory when we put them into what sales and other incomes that comes as a result of the operations of or the operating activity of the business or the core activity of the business this is what we are earning for the whole world firm taking into account the profit of the period and the sales for the period. This is what we are earning as the whole firm, and this is our performance for the whole firm, taking into account everything. I hope that is clear. So that is our net sales, so our net profit percentage for the period. I am saying that this net profit represents what the performance for the whole firm, both internal and external, for everyone actually. But I say gross profit. It is just a profit for the operations internally internally for just the business alone i hope that is clear so that is something about the gross profit net the net profit is for the whole firm but for the gross profit is part of the firm some part of what the firm that's why we are generating as a gross profit percentage so let's take note of that now let's move on to iv iv what are we asked to calculate so let's see we are asked to calculate for quick or acid test. So remember, the first thing that we have calculated is coming from profitability ratio. But then quick or acid test ratio, acid test ratio is also coming from another ratio called liquidity. Liquidity, we are talking about the ease with which our assets can be converted to cash quickly. The ease and speed with which our assets can be converted to cash quickly that's what we call it, liquidity and liquidity ratio indicates the anticipated period of time as and when a debt is due to pay or as and when a debt is due to be received i mean it works on both sides as and when it is due either you be paid or you receive it that's the liquidity in terms of cash the rate at which our assets can be converted to what cash quickly. We're talking about the ease and speed at which our assets can be converted to cash quickly. And then quick asset test ratio is one of the quickest way within which we can convert our assets into cash quickly. And with quick or asset test ratio, it takes into account our current assets, okay, taking into account or uh, Taking away our stocks, that's what we call the inventory. Inventory, okay, and then divide by our current what liability. I mean, measures current assets, less stock over current liability, and expresses as what as a whole, as what one. So, in a normal sense, we expect every company to have a quick or asset test ratio of what one. But if the asset, if the quick or the asset test ratio as a figure for the company is less than one then it means that there's something wrong meaning that as an investor if you want to invest in a company like this and then the asset test ratio as a figure is less than one meaning that the rate at which you can get your money back if you want to withdraw your money from that company is going to be relatively well, slow or difficult for you to get it because at that time your quick asset test ratio is very well, low and so therefore you take time before you can convert their yeah, assets for the time carrying assets into cash quickly for you to get your money back if you invest in an inventory let's say in an inventory in a company 
if your investment was in an inventory in the company this is what is going to take you for you to get your money back and this is the reason why as an investor you need to do all these background checks before you start any you don't just consider the profitability aspect of the company but also look at what is the rate at which my money can be i mean received or what is the rate at which my money being invested in another uh resource or another investment within a company can be converted back to the same money so that i can receive it so that you can receive it for other investment consideration that you want to consider based on the decision you're taking so that's the quick low asset test ratio we are talking about the ease and speed taking into account our store remember stock is one of the current assets which in normal terms it's not easily to be converted to cash quickly by some companies okay but also i think as general that most of companies or most businesses the 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 in the in liquid aspect of their assets is most of the time will stock for that one people will come and buy if nobody comes to buy the stocks or your product it will be there it will be there for long nobody will buy and it can be converted to cash quickly but the rest you can easily convert it to what cash quickly that's why we call this quick or asset test ratio Meaning that if you take stock out of the remaining current assets, the rest can be converted to cash work quickly. Is that okay? And we express that in relation to our current liability and then we express that as, what, as a whole. So what is the relationship between current assets and current liability being expressed as one? That is what an investor you need to know and know how what you can do with them as and when you face those situations. So let's take note of that. So Let's see with our current asset. So we a current asset, we can see that current assets coins of what here, coins of what inventory, receivables, and then cash and bank. And the total was what 150. So it's going to be 150,000 divided by sorry. So let's subtract our stock minus stock of what the stock was what that's inventory of what. 90,000 90,000 so inventory of 90,000 then divide by current liability wages trade payables and taxation of what 90,000 90,000 90,000 so in that light I can say that with your calculator you should be able to get something around 0. 6 6 seven. remember the figures are real carrying figures so 0 0.667 each to one so here you can clearly see that with this come though i don't have other standard that i'm used to compare but then i can clearly see that since my quick asset test ratio is less than one meaning that you take a longer time for me to convert all my assets after taking stock out into cash out quickly it's expressed as your liability that is the meaning behind this so as an investor you should be able to know this before you invest so let's take note of that let's take note of that so that is my quick or asset test ratio that's my quick or asset test ratio i mean yeah we are taking into account the difference between our current assets minus stock compared to our current liability you're talking about the measurement between the two scenarios in this case so let's take note of that now let's move on to v i think that is our last requirement receivables collection period most of the time also here the test collection period here we are talking about what is the duration within which a company can collect it there from its customers as an investor you should be able to know this if you want to invest you should be able to know this if it takes a longer duration for the company to collect it there meaning that when you invest in a company and you need your money within a stipulated period of time, your money is going to be locked up. As a capital, it's going to be locked up because at that time, the company are what? Invest your money into other investments or into other what? financial activity within which, let's say, an inventory, within which sales has been undertaken on credit terms to their customers. And so, therefore, these products or this inventory is going to be with the customer because they are given a duration and because it was undertaken as a credit or terms you as an investor if you want your money for a certain period of time or for a certain duration it's going to be difficult so the longer your collection period as a company the more your capital is going to be locked out 
but the shorter your collection period, the better you can use your capital for other business activities. So we expect that as a company, you should be able to have what a shorter collection period, a shorter debtors collection with period, and have what a longer uh, payment what period as from creditors. So I can use more of these outside what source of finance to invest in other activities so I can earn more profit. I don't know if you're going to pay, but then the idea is that you have what a shorter collection period from debtors and a longer what payment period from creditors. So let's take note of it. It's very vital. So from the calculation you see that whether this company has a shorter collection period or a longer collection period. So let's see. So when it comes to receivables, receivables collection, receivables collection period, receivable collection period is going to be so more of the time we calculate it as our trade receivables. This one can be found in the balance sheet or the student financial position divided by our credit sales. Please take note here is what credit sales, not any other sales, credit what sales. All right, sorry. Credit sales. All right, and then multiply by, because we are talking about duration, it can take this, let's say three to five or three to six, this, or it can be a week that's it can be in weeks that's two 52 weeks 52 weeks or it can be months, 12 months or it can be in a year but the goal here is that businesses operate on daily basis so no business or no company required to have it received let's say in a year that one doesn't make sense but you can have it in a month or weeks or in days but on a normal basis you will see them mostly in days so if you are not given the duration that you should use in calculating your receivable collection period or payable payment period, then you should be able to go by the this. Is that okay? So in this case, let's see for our trade receivables. So you can clearly see that our trade receivables for the period was, let's see, was what? 50,000, right? So I can say that trade receivable is what? 50,000 Ghana shilling. All right, and then divide by so what is our credit sales? So, here in this case, our revenue that we have in our boost, this one is going to be our sales or credit sales for the period. So, that's going to be what 30 sorry, 320,000, and then multiply by so here, since we are going for this, going to what 365 this. If it is LEP, that's where you three success. So irrespective of what you're using, then fine, you should be able to go. But then there was one thing that you should have done at the first instant. At the same time you're solving any business question, okay, first thing that you need to do is first indicate the name of the company. It's very important. So that's the name of the company. Kenyatta Limited. So tell us that Kenyatta Limited or financial statement analysis for Kenyatta Limited for the year ended for the year ended 31st May 20x5 and you are good to go. So guys, I, I hope you are enjoying this video. I hope you are enjoying it. So if you are really enjoying this and you are getting value out of this, please make sure to smash the like button. Okay, for me, it's very important. Please and please smash the like button for me. Share with your friends. And if you are forgetting not to subscribe, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates on math and accounting math and account please and please subscribe like and share subscribe like and share and make sure to comment the comment is also very important it helps us to push the video outside for people also to get the benefit to also to watch it as well so please and please make sure to subscribe like 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 comment and share it's very important to please and please i'm expecting you to do that so let's wrap up and then finish with our today's studies i mean today's video so that we get it on so with your calculator you should be able to arrive at 
so in my case i had something like 57 point 57 point zero three one two five so on approximation generous i can see that is what 57 or this so you can clearly see that for kenyatta company for their collection period it takes more than almost more than two months for them to receive their money back from their debtors that's from the receiver with the receivables or the rate that rate or the duration within which they can get their money back from their credit customers is nearly two months so that's 57 if you had to convert to the nearest and um, you had to run it up it's more like or two months i mean more like two months ago this is the period so as an investor this is why you need to look, also look out for if you want to invest in this type of company you should be able to assess you should be able to assess their financial statement and then analyze these ratios and going to help you to make a better decision to make a better decision and to pay off for you so actually this is where we bring an end to if you are blessed with this video please go ahead to smash the like button subscribe and share and I invite friends to also come on this channel share with all your friends on campus everywhere that you are which the institution that you are on make sure to share with them so that they can also be blessed to watch this video so hey guys thanks for watching uh, this video i'm being grateful having you here for this time so i'll see you in the next video where we discuss other key questions to assist you and to guide you you can also recommend some topics i want me to cover on this channel so by this way i can do that to assist you guys so i'll see you in the next video bye bye